How can microservices communicate between each other? This is a very important decision when designing microservices and it comes with its own set of trade-offs. And broadly speaking, there are two choices you can make. There is synchronous communication or asynchronous communication. We're going to cover both in this video and I'm going to show you how you can implement them. Let's say we have two services, each with their own database. And this is actually a small microservices system that I created in one of my previous videos. Now I'm going to copy the services below and then let's discuss how they can talk with each other. So first we're going to talk about synchronous communication. Let's say sync communication. And basically you implement this using something like HTTP where you send a synchronous request from one service to the other using either REST or something like gRPC. The nature of synchronous communication is that it's blocking. The node service can't continue doing any work or to be more specific, the current API request is going to block until it gets the response from the tag service. Don't confuse this with async await in C-sharp that's something different. Essentially, HTTP is a synchronous communication protocol. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, we have async communication. Let me update the title here. And we're also going to have our two services. Let me copy the notes and the tag service. And the difference with async communication is that we need an additional component inside of our system. So this is going to be our message queue. We can use any technology we want to implement this. And our services now communicate by sending messages to the queue and then listening for messages from the queue. Of course, we could enhance this by introducing topics which allow one service to publish to many services and we could use many different solutions for the actual message queue. It can be RabbitMQ, it can be Azure Service Bus, Amazon SQS or even Kafka, even though it's probably too heavy for just simple messaging. Now, what are the pros and cons of each of these approaches? The synchronous approach is more tightly coupled because the services need to know about each other and they need to know which API endpoint to call in order to facilitate this communication. We need to think about resilience when designing synchronous communication because any type of distributed system is naturally volatile and we could run into a situation where the tag service is down and in that case we may not be able to complete the request from the node service. However, the benefit of using synchronous communication is that we get an immediate response from the calling API. When it comes to async communication, we can think of it as more loosely coupled because we only need to know about the message contracts to be able to communicate between our services. Now, this also comes with managing these message contracts, serializing them, and also versioning them over time. Then we have to think about delivery guarantees, like at least once, at most once, or exactly once messaging. Typically, most message brokers are going to give you at least once messaging, and you need to deal with item potency on the consumer side because you may run into multiple message deliveries for the same message. Another thing to consider with async communication is latency. There's more operational complexity and there is this nice little concept called eventual consistency where you basically introduce a delay between when you publish a message and when that message is processed and the side effects of that processing are stored in your system. So this is the high level overview between synchronous and asynchronous communication in a microservices system. Now let me show you how we can implement this inside of our .NET application. I'm first going to demo the synchronous communication flow and I'm using .NET Aspire here to orchestrate two services. I have the Notes API and the Tags API. Each of them have their own database, even though this is running on the same database server. And the Notes API has a reference to the Tags API, which will just allow us to call the Tags API using service discovery. Now, where this occurs is in this simple endpoint for creating a new note within the Notes API. We have a request and a response object. We accept the request from a minimal API endpoint and inside of this we're going to send a request, a synchronous request to the tags API to analyze the node and then figure out what are the appropriate tags for this node. The logic for this is implemented in this helper method here, which is going to obtain an HTTP client using the HTTP client factory that's configured to call the tags API. And as you can see, we need to know which API endpoint to call. We need to know what is the contract for the request for this endpoint. We define this in our shared library in the DTO's namespace, and both of the APIs are going to use the same DTO to facilitate communication. We also need to know about the response which in this case is the analyze node response. On the implementation side, in the tags API, this is just another API endpoint. So how this works at runtime is, let me start the application. You can see our services are slowly spinning up and everything seems to be up and running and healthy. And now I can send a request to create a new node. So I'll send some requests 
and you can see that after a couple of moments we get back a 201 created response and the response contains the tags that we obtained from the tags API. Going back to the Aspire dashboard, I'll head over to our distributed traces and I want to show you what the communication looks like in case of synchronous communication. So note that this is our one request to the notes API. You can see the timeline for this entire request here and within it we are talking to our database issuing a synchronous HTTP request to the tags API and then in orange here you can see the processing of this request in the tags API itself. Finally we get a response back in the notes API and this allows us to finalize the request. So this is what synchronous communication looks like. Now what if we wanted to implement this asynchronously? What would that look like? So let's say that returning the tags together with the note isn't business critical and we want to avoid the failure scenarios when the tags API is unavailable and we can't successfully execute this endpoint. So what we can do is instead of running this synchronously we are going to instead process this asynchronously. So let me show you what that's going to look like. The idea here is going to be that we're going to send a message to some queue telling any interested consumer that we've created a new node. And the consumer is of course going to be the tags API which is just going to run the same logic and persist the tags for this node. So how can we go about implementing this? Well the first thing we need is some sort of messaging service and I'm going to use Azure Service Bus. .NET Aspire already has an integration that allows you to introduce service bus into your app host and I want to install the Aspire hosting Azure service bus library. So let me add that and now inside of my app host I can create a variable to hold my service bus instance and I can say builder at Azure service bus. Let's call this the service bus and I want to run this locally using an emulator which I'm going to configure with the container lifetime of persistent and this is going to run two additional containers under the hood. One is going to be a SQL server instance and another is going to be the actual emulator for Azure Service Bus. Nonetheless, we'll be able to connect to this and use it like a regular Service Bus connection. Your alternative is creating a Service Bus in Azure and then connecting to that by specifying the connection string. Now, we also need to take care of configuring our network topology and I'm going to add a Service Bus queue called Notes. This is going to be sufficient for our communication. Now, let's also add the reference to the service bus from our services. I'll say with reference service bus and then wait for a service bus and I'll do the same for my notes API. So now both of them can connect to my service bus. But we also need to connect to it from our client applications. Luckily there's also a .NET Aspire integration for that and I'm going to use this just to simplify things. And what we are looking for is Aspire Azure Messaging Service Bus. So let me install that. And then in my program file I can say builder add Azure Service Bus Client and I just need to specify the name of the connection string which is going to match our resource name. Now because this is in preview and if you want to have telemetry you have to set a switch for Azure Experimental Enable Activity Source to true in order to see the distributed traces show up in the Aspire dashboard. Now I'm going to do the same for the tags API. So I'll copy Aspire Azure Messaging Service Bus and add it to the tags API and in the program file of the tags API, I'll add the same piece of code as I have here. So let me just copy the starting few lines and I'm going to drop them in here. And now both of our applications are connected to Service Bus. Now to make this a bit more interesting, I'm going to also add an Aspire integration for Redis. So let me add Aspire hosting Redis to my app host. And in the app host itself, I'm going to configure our Redis resource by saying builder, add Redis, give it a name. And I'm going to add with reference Redis and then let's wait for Redis to be available in the tags API and I'll do the same thing in the notes API. In the client applications I also want to add an Aspire integration and I'm going to add Aspire Stack Exchange Redis distributed caching and while I'm here I'm also going to install the hybrid cache library just to simplify working with Redis. So let me install the latest stable version. Then I'll just connect to this from my application. I'll say builder add Redis distributed cache. We give it the name of our resource and I'll say builder services add hybrid cache. And this is enough for me to start using hybrid cache. I'm just going to apply everything to the tags API and I'll jump a moment into the future after I've completed this. Okay, now that we have our boilerplate code in place, we can finally start writing some asynchronous communication between our services. Now the first thing I'm going to add is a message contract 
that I can share between the services. I'll add that in Notely shared. And let's create another folder called contract. And in here, I'm going to add a new class and I'm going to call this note created. Let me turn this into a record. So I'll say public sealed record. And I'm going to have the note ID as the argument. Then we're going to have the title and the content. And now that we have our message contract, we can go ahead and implement asynchronous communication from our API endpoint. I will need another dependency. So this is going to be the service bus client. Now, typically any implementation is going to have a similar API where you can easily publish a message using some sort of messaging client. So how Azure Service Bus works is you use the Service Bus client to create a sender where you specify the name of the queue. Of course, we could get this value from configuration and I'm just going to hard code it for our demo. And essentially after we create a sender, I can say sender send message async, initialize a new service bus message, then I can pass in my message as JSON. So I'll say JSON serializer, serialize, and let's pass in the message. And this is going to be node created. So let me initialize node created. I'll need to add a reference and then I can say node ID, node title, and node content. And finally, I can serialize my note and send this to the Azure service bus queue. So that's all there is to it from the publishing side. Now, when we call this endpoint, it's going to publish the message to the queue, but currently we didn't write the code for consuming it. We need to implement the consuming logic in the tags API. So let me go to the analyze note feature and inside of it, I'm going to add a new class and I'm going to call this the node created processor. I'll need to implement this using some sort of background service. And we're going to take a dependency here on the same service bus client talking to our service bus instance. So let me add the service bus client. I'll need an iService scope factory and I'll need a logger just to add some respective log statements. So what am I going to do here? I will first need a new instance of the service bus processor options and I want to set autocomplete messages to false. This is because I want to confirm the messages myself. Then we need to use the service bus client to create a new processor and I'm going to add a try finally block where in the finally statement I'm going to stop processing the message and I'll pass this the cancellation token and in the try step we need to set two things first we need to process the message this is going to be a delegate that I'm going to define in just a moment I'm also going to define the process error delegate this one I'm going to write in line because it's simple and after I configured my callbacks I can say processor start processing async now I'm also going to delay here by saying await task delay timeout infinite and let's also pass in the stopping token so then let me define a helper method called process message i'm going to define it below it's going to be private async task process message and the arguments have to be the process message event arcs this matches our delegate and now we can actually implement our processing logic. So first I want to try to deserialize the message that we get from service bus. I'll say JSON serializer, deserialize, specify node created, and then we can access the message by accessing the message property and then the message body. If the node created, is null for some reason, then let's just go ahead and return from this method. Optionally, we could log an error or throw some exception or publish some sort of failure message, whatever we feel is appropriate to handle this edge case. Then I want to create a new service scope using my scope factory. And what I want to do next is just access my analyze node endpoint. And I can simply call the handler, which is a static method. Now we do need to provide a couple of arguments. The first one being the analyze node request. So I can pass in the arguments from my node created message and the remaining arguments we can resolve from dependency injection. So I'll say scope service provider get required service and this is going to be the tags DB context and then we need the logger. I'll say scope service provider get required service and let's specify I logger of program. Now this is going to return an I result and I can check if the result is an I status code result where the status code has a value of HTTP status code. Okay, that means that we successfully called analyze note and I can say args complete message async. This is going to mark the message as completed and remove it from the queue. And I need to specify the actual message to be able to call this method. And of course, because it's asynchronous, I need to await it. Now let's go into the analyze note endpoint. You can see here that we're just going to analyze the contents of our note and figure out which tags we're going to store. And it would be useful if we also cache these values because both of our instances can access the same cache. Now, in order to save us some time, I'm going to drop the code for this. We'll take a dependency on the hybrid cache 
and below we can generate a cache key and just set the value by calling hybrid cache set async. We'll need to update the node created processor to specify this value and then I need to register this as a hosted service. So I'll say builder services add hosted service and specify the node created processor. And now when we run this, we'll be able to implement this using asynchronous communication. So let me show you what that flow looks like. First, as the application is starting, you can see we have a lot more services here. There's our two databases inside of Postgres. There's the Redis instance, which we added. And here is the Azure Service Bus emulator, which is running locally. It's using a SQL Server database under the hood. And here's my Nodes queue, which I've configured inside of my app host. So all of this has to start up and be ready for consumption before my two applications are going to start. And now that everything is ready, we can also take a look at the graph to see what our system looks like. And now if I jump into Postman, and we send the same request to create a node. You'll see we hit this breakpoint in the create node endpoint. So we're going to use the service bus client to create a sender, initialize our message, and then send this off to the respective queue. This is going to trigger our processor. So we hit the breakpoint in the node created processor. This is a background service running in the tags API. We're going to deserialize this message. You can see that we found some content inside. And then we're going to call our analyze node endpoint. So let me press continue. And then this is just going to execute store the tags in the cache and then we can easily expose this to the notes api using the same cache key so i'll press continue we should see the response back in postman you can see the tags are currently missing however if i grab the id for this note and i send a request to fetch this note we should be able to get the note together with its tags which you can see here and if we take a look at the distributed traces, you can see the post request for creating a node. It's a lot more complicated, but if you take a look at the timelines, notice that sending the node here completes, and then we are processing the message asynchronously after our initial API request has completed. So this is what the async communication flow looks like between two services from a distributed trace perspective. Now I want to mention just one more thing before we wrap this video up. And that is what happens when the downstream service is unavailable. In the case of synchronous communication, when the tag service is down for whatever reason, the communication itself is not going to function. However, in the async communication flow, if the tag service is down, but the message broker is up, we can still publish the messages just fine. And when the downstream service is available again, it's going to pick up the message off the queue and then process it accordingly. Now, there's a lot more that we can say here, but I think this covers the essentials and I'm going to explain expand on this topic in some future video. An interesting pattern about managing long-lived business flows in distributed systems is the Saga pattern, and if you want to learn more about it, go ahead and check out this video next. Make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks a lot for watching, and until next time, stay awesome.